Hi everyone, I am Chris. This is Simply Classic. And today we're gonna to make a really unique bag. It is the Kelly Beverage Handbag by American Stitchers. Now, this bag is designed to hold a beverage, whatever beverage you would like. And we need to install a grommet. I'm gonna tell you ahead of time. Gail gives you a whole page in this pattern of resources as to where to find the size grommet you need. And also she's got a source for a pressing grommet kind of similar to ours, only larger, where you can get that grommet. The, also, the other thing she has is um, on Amazon, you can buy the beverage pouches that fit perfectly inside this bag. So she's got that linked in the pattern. I'll also link it in the description below the video so you can be taking a look at that to get your beverage pouch for your beverage, whatever that may be. Okay, so never made this bag before. It's just time for spring. Even though it's a little chilly here today, you know, soccer games are going on and the beach is coming up. And I just really think this is a fantastic bag for spring and summer. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over pattern pieces. I did do a little bit of prep beforehand with my straps and crossbody handles. We'll go over that in just a minute. And let's get started. Okay, let's go over these pieces. So as I mentioned, you're gonna cut a crossbody strap. I've already done that. You've seen me make crossbody straps before. I also cut my handles and went ahead and sewed my handles together. So easy enough. We have two uh, crossbody strap connectors and four handle connectors. So they are different sizes. These are the handle connectors. These are the crossbody strap connectors. I went ahead and folded the edges into the center, top stitch down each side. So we have four of these and two of these. Okay. We have an interior slip pocket. And for the interior slip pocket, you are going to cut one of the exteriors. You're gonna cut one lining and you're gonna put some woven interfacing on the back of your lining piece. You're going to have two of the top facing pieces. So I just cut two of those in my main fabric, my main faux, nothing on the back. Just two long pieces. All right, one of the things that she, she suggests you use for this, and I obviously think it's a great idea because it is a beverage bag, is to use Insulbrite. I-N-S-U-L, Insulbrite. I got mine from Amazon because I didn't have any. And so I'm gonna link that below. It's not that expensive. And it is a fleece looking product that has, it looks like it has aluminum foil in the middle. And it's kind of scrunchy. Feel it, hear it? It's kind of interesting. So this is just to keep the beverage hot or cold, whatever it is that you have. And you're gonna need about a half a yard of this. So again, I will link that below. So for our divider pocket, we're gonna need one cut of the insole bright. We're going to need a lining with nothing on it. And then we're going to need three other lining pieces, all with deck or with um, woven fuse or some kind of woven interfacing on the back. Okay, so we have one, two, three of these, and then an insole bright and one with nothing on it. We have our exterior panel, and our exterior panel is actually we're going to sew. We're going to have a, a seam down the center. So we need to cut four of these mirrored. So here's one set mirrored, and you do have squares cut out of the corner. So make sure that you cut them mirrored. So I have one set, and then I have another set here. There's no um, stabilizer on the back of this at this point. We will add some foam once we get through stitching that all together. We are also going to have our lining panel. Now our lining panel pattern piece has this place cut out 
at the bottom. And that's going to be where we install our grommet for the little beverage bag spout to stick out. The other thing about this piece is that you've got a place here. You, you cut, let's start with this. You cut out two lining pieces on the fold. Okay, you put woven fuse, two on the back, and you have two lining pieces. And of course, you're cutting out your triangle or your rectangles there at the bottom. Then you cut one of the insole bright. Okay, so I have one of my insole bright here. Now you see I have a little square cut out on my insole bright. So on the pattern, she has a place for you to cut out, and you're going to cut the square out of one side of the insole bright, whatever side you want your grommet to go on. Okay, so I chose this side. And really the insole bright doesn't have a right or wrong side at this point, so it doesn't really matter, but just cut a square out there. Then you're going to take the pattern piece, and there's a here, a little place here. Where, see how it says cut on fold, and it might be backwards for you. Fold here. So you're going to take and you're going to fold on the pattern piece. You're going to fold that over, and then you're going to cut two foam pieces on the fold. Now, your foam piece, one is going to be a full foam piece. The other one, you're going to cut a full foam piece, but you're also going to cut the little square out of the bottom. So two full pieces in lining, one full piece in insole bright minus the square, two folded edge, meaning you fold the pattern, you cut two foam, and of one of the foam, you cut out the square. And all that's explained in the pattern very clearly. You shouldn't have a problem with that. Okay, we have our interior flap. We have two of these. Did my lining, put some woven fuse two on the back. I have my interior zip pocket. I've got two of these. Again, woven fuse two on the back. I have a bottom stabilizer piece. And at this point, I have not fused it. We will fuse that once we put part of the bag together. And that is it. Now I am going to do my zipper pocket the way I like to traditionally do my zipper pocket with the zipper overlay. So I also have a zipper overlay somewhere here that I will find. And we'll put that in that way. You're going to need a number five zipper for the top. I'm going to do mine in black. Then you need some number three zippers for the inside. That's your interior zipper pocket and your divider panel. So I'm using red for that. You're going to need some rivets um, for your crossbody you're going to need a strap adjuster and two swivel clasps and then you're going to need two rate two d rings for your strap uh, your crossbody strap you're going to need four rectangle rings for your handles and then you're going to need a couple of magnetic snaps all right so let's get started as i mentioned i went ahead and already made all of my strap connectors and handle connectors Easy enough. We're going to go ahead and prep these real quick by putting the rings on. So get your rectangle rings and your D rings. And the two shorter pieces are your crossbody straps. So we're going to work with that first. And all we're going to do is take a little bit of double sided tape and just kind of prep these for when we're ready to sew them on. So I'm going to put a piece of that here in the middle. And I'm putting it on the wrong side. I'm going to put our D-rings on. Fold the D-ring, or fold the top part down. We'll fold this bottom part up. I am going to put a little bit more double-sided tape on here so that when we go to attach it to the bag, that will already be there for me. And we're going to set that aside. So we're going to do the same thing on this one.
we're actually going to be riveting these on. So there's no need to worry about how far you uh, fold this top part over because it's actually going to be riveted. We're not going to sew it. All right, so those are done. We're going to do the same thing on these. Well, similar on these here. We're going to start out by getting just a little bit of double-sided tape. I'm going to put that on the very edge here. Make sure it does not go over the edge. I'm just going to put it on the edge. Okay, so from here, go ahead and put your D-ring on. And we want to fold this down an inch and a half. So you can mark that ahead of time. I'm just going to use my table. And once I get one done, so you see it's not going to go all the way to the edge. I'm just going to use that one to line up the others so that I know they're all even. Now this bag has some strap ends. She, she has you use strap ends on these. And it kind of adds to the bag because, let me show you the picture. On the front here, you see how the strap ends are kind of loose and this and or the strap connectors are kind of loose. They're riveted on and then the little strap ends are on there. I happen to have some of these strap ends, so I'm going to go ahead and use them. We'll get those on. So she suggests going ahead and put those on now. I believe I got these either from Bringberry or Emmeline. I can't remember which one. And all you do, they're the triangle ones, you just slip them in. And I usually put some glue in here as well. And then you can go ahead and screw them on. Okay, so it, make, it gives it a nice little finish and um, it just kind of classes it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all of these strap ends on the straps, just screw those in, put some glue, and then we'll come back. So one thing I want to show you is that the end of your strap is supposed to butt up to the hardware like this. And in order to do that, you have to cut little triangles off the side or the end of your strap so that when you put this on, it fits. And when you do that, it will butt right up to the back of your um, strap. If it does not, you you can certainly cut a little bit more. Okay, and you just put your screws in. And we have all of our strap connectors done. So I'm just gonna set these aside for a later step. And we're going to start with our front pocket or what she's calling the exterior slip pocket on the pattern piece. So this is my main fabric, my main faux. And the reason why I'm using this is um, it's really lightweight. It's nice. I really like that. And then of course our red matches great with it. So on the lining piece, we're going to mark our center on the top and on the bottom. And we want to draw a line here. I'm going to get my 
ruler, although I do see my fold, but just so that you can see it. Got my line and I'm gonna measure up from the bottom. Now, the curved edge is the bottom. So I'm gonna measure up three quarters of an inch, draw a line, and then we're gonna install a magnet. So, right where these lines intersect, I'm gonna put the hole or the circle of the magnet, and then just go ahead and mark where I need to cut. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And now because my lining obviously is lining, I'm going to put a little piece of Decoville Heavy behind here just to help stabilize the snap. So I always keep scraps of Decoville Heavy or in light too, but I mostly use the Heavy. And I use them on the back side of rivets, on the back side of snaps, magnetic snaps, and it just really helps everything stay together. So don't throw your scraps away. And on this side, we are going to install the male part. So let me find that in my little hardware package here. Um, I think that at this point, I'm going to actually wait to put this in because I want to make sure that I can stitch and top stitch this without a problem. And sometimes, you know, when you put your snaps in, I mean, this one's pretty close to the edge, so I want to wait. See, there's no problem in doing that. We're just going to set this aside for a second, and we'll just make sure before we close this up, we install that snap. So we're going to put these pieces right sides together. Go ahead and clip. All the way around. And we want to leave a hole for turning. So I'm going to do that up here on the top. So I'll stitch here, go all the way around, and stop over here on the side. And for this seam allowance, we're using a quarter of an inch. hand cranks I, in the corners I will just to make sure everything looks good So from here, go ahead and cut little triangles out of your corners so that you can flip this. If you have pinking shears and they work well, you can certainly use that as well.
I'm also going to clip up here in the corners. Okay, so let's turn this piece. I'm gonna use my turning tool to just kind of go in here and get that curve out real nice. Get our corners out. Actually, I'm gonna cut this at an angle as well, just to kind of get some of that bulk out of there. I'm going to go ahead and clip and I'm going to try to make sure my lining is not visible as much as possible from the front. Make sure that that's turned all the way to the back. Now I'm going to, I need to make sure I, or I need to install my magnetic snap and that's going to be really close to the edge. So I'm going to make sure I top stitch down here first before I do that. So you're just going to turn this under. And you could certainly use some double-sided tape here if you wanted. But again, we're not going to be able to stitch all the way across here until we install that snap. So let me just clip it. From here, we're going to top stitch. Now, in an effort to not have a back stitch showing, although this is a pretty busy faux, so I'm probably going to be okay if I do back stitch a little bit. I think I'm going to start here in the corner. I'm going to come down, come around, come up. I'll install my snap, and then I'll go across top. And actually, I'm sorry, we shouldn't even be doing that. Hold on. What we need to do is we need to mark down. Gil gives us the measurement on this. Draw a line. Okay, so we're gonna start out by stitching just from this line down around and up to this line. So we'll do that first, then I'll install my magnetic snap and then we'll move on. So don't top stitch the whole thing. Ooh, I almost messed up. Okay. 
I am going to do a little back stitch here just because, again, my foe is so busy. I think it's going to be okay. I don't think you're going to see the back stitch very much. And then when I do my corners, I'm definitely going to make sure that I hand crank this because it is very a very sharp curve. just stitching up to my other line here. Okay, so now we can go ahead and install our snap without any problems. And you can see on the back here where I top stitched. So let me open this up. And see your snap is pretty close to the edge. So that's actually over my top stitch line. So I would suggest you do that. Go ahead and top stitch and then put your snap on. I'm maybe gonna have to cut this deco build down some, I think, because it's so close. All right, so I'm just gonna slide that right over those prongs. my washer on. And then bend that over. It's a little tricky doing it this way, but it makes for a much neater finish. I have to say. Okay, so all that is good to go. I am going to put just a little bit of double sided tape over the prongs. And Double-sided tape helps hold the snap in just in case it ever does want to come out and also protects the main fabric here from the prongs rubbing against it. All right, so here we are. Now this here is going to be the front pocket and the flap that goes over the little grommet. It's, all, it's like a two-in-one piece. So I think what I want to do is I think I want to put my tag here on the pocket. What's going to happen if, if you decide you want to do that um, is that the we're going to be sewing this on as a pocket, but we're not sewing all the way bottom. So we're going to sew down this edge right where we stopped our stitching. We're going to come across the bottom to form the bottom of the pocket. And then here, we'll, the other stitching is we're going to turn and go back up. And that's going to be a pocket. And then this is going to be a flap. So knowing that, I want to put the bag tag right above where that line is going to be. So I'm going to switch to a silver marking pen so that it does not disappear on me. And I'm going to line up my two stitching marks. So I stopped here and here. I'm going to draw a line. And then I can't see that. Let me try that again. Okay. 
I know you can't see that. I can barely see it, but it is there. And then I also want to make sure that I'm sewing up the same distance all the way around. Otherwise, my pocket's going to be on crooked. So I'm actually going to be sewing up two and five eighths of an inch. And that makes that line even. Let me find the center here. Oh, so this is five point two five. So the center is right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my tag on and then we'll continue. I have my tag, I have my snap, double-sided tape, re-clipped my top, and we're gonna set this aside for just a minute. We're gonna take two of our front pieces here. We're gonna put them right sides together, and we're gonna stitch. And we are now switching to a half-inch seam allowance. From here, go ahead and open up your front. We're going to open the seam allowance and we're going to top stitch on both sides. for the other side. This is what the front looks like. You can see the stitch down the front is pretty cool. And then here's the back. So I'm gonna do this exact same thing for the other two front pieces or back pieces, whatever exterior pieces, let's call them that. Just repeat that whole process. So now that we have both of these pieces completed, we're gonna take one of them and we're going to go back to our pocket we know where the center is because we have a seam there. And we're going to measure down and put this pocket right against the center. And of course, we want it centered on the pocket as well. So let me just. Okay, so centered is going to be right here where the clip is. Now this is an excellent time to use the so tight magnetic snaps. If you are a quilter or have been around the quilting industry, you've seen these before. They're pretty neat. They actually have them for bag making and they're the bigger ones. If you, the way to get them apart is to, you have to twist them apart. You can't just pull them apart. That's how strong they are. So the good thing is that they're nice and strong. The bad thing is that you need to be careful you don't pinch your fingers because when you go to snap these together, I mean, it is, it's tight. And if your finger's in the way, it's gonna pinch it. So just 
Be careful. They're amazing though. I love them. Okay, so I'm going to make sure this is centered. Make sure it looks good. And then all you do is you slip the back part underneath. You take your front part and it will hold everything in place. So twist it apart. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up where we left off. We're gonna sew up, well, actually we're not. We're gonna start here. We're gonna come down. Well, you know what? I need to top stitch this pocket closed. Let me do that first. Here, I'm just gonna fold this out of the way to do that. All right, Let's top stitch. I'm trying to make sure that my lining does not peek through. All right, so now that that's top stitched, we are going to pick up where we left off here. We're gonna come down to meet this other stitching line. So straight across to meet the other stitching line and then sew back up and then our pocket will be on. I am gonna draw a line across here because I wanna make sure I stitch straight and I'm not really gonna have any other guidance as to whether or not I'm stitching straight if I don't have a line. I'm gonna use the even though I use my silver marking pen, I'm, I'm still kind of having a hard time seeing it. So I'm going to go and use this um, sew line air erase pen to do it. And I think <laughs> it doesn't want to work. Okay, and then again, I'm just going to double check to make sure I am two and five eighths. All the way around. And yours might be two and a half. It's more like two and three quarters for me now. Okay, as long as it's the same distance, whatever it may be, you're good to go. We're going to go ahead and stitch around. So I want to make sure I start in the same hole. straight across. Make sure I end up in the same stitch where I top stitched and then turn and come up the other side. And 
And so now what we have is a flap because we're going to put our grommet hole over here and we have a pocket. We now want to stall the other side of our magnetic snap. So to figure out where that needs to be, I'm just going to kind of line it up. Easiest way for me is to just kind of line it up with the existing snap. I'm just going to make a line there. And we'll install it. So it's right there. Yep, yeah, it's perfect. So of course you have your your seam here and you don't want to cut a hole in your seam because you're just cutting stitches. So just make sure that when you install this, you center it over the seam and try not to catch your top stitches either. So I'm going just on the outside of my top stitches. And this is, of course, going to be the female side of the snap. Get my little protecting protector film off there. Put this on. It looks like it's going to be good. I'm going to put a little piece of Decadal Heavy again, just to give it some stability. All right, and now we have our little snap closure that's going to protect our spout. All right, so we want to go ahead and put our, now we know we're going to put our spout on this side, so we need to make sure that we use our foam that is, has the hole cut out. So from here, you're going to take your foam piece and you're going to, you can either fuse it on. Um, I'm going to just use some double-sided tape to get it on here. You should have a half inch all the way around and make sure that your square is cut out on the side that you want your spout. So if this is the right side of the bag, I want my spout up here in the front. So that's when I make sure I'm going to put my square. So I'm just going to take some double sided tape, run it along the foam. This is um, one inch double sided tape. And I get it from WLAP. They have several different sizes. And I like to have a little bit of everything on hand. I'm just going to put a couple down the middle. Now, obviously, if you've got fusible foam, this would be a much better option. But I do not, so I'm just going to make sure that this stays on. Now, 
Now, if you want to draw your seam allowances on your main part of your bag, that always helps when you place your stabilizers, whether it's foam, deck of the light, you know, whatever it may be. Um, I usually like to at least do it at the top because that's where you want a nice crisp edge. When you top stitch your bag and fold it over and or you know sew it together and, and all that. So I might do that. I might just go ahead and draw that half inch line there so that I know exactly where to place the foam. Side to side does make a difference, but it's not as crucial as that top edge. All right, so before I put that on, I'm going to go ahead and draw that seam allowance in. Okay, so now I know when I go to line up this foam, I need to put it right there against that line. Now I'm a little tight on these edges, like this edge isn't so bad, but this edge is a little bit more than a half inch, or a little less than a half inch. So to determine where that half inch is, I'm going to draw another line and then just go ahead and trim my foam back. You're going to be better off trimming it now than to try to trim it after the fact. Okay, the bottom is definitely good. This side looks good. All right, so here we are. From here, we wanna put our strap connectors on. So grab two of your, or your handle connectors, grab two of your handle connectors. And we're going to, we know where the center is. We're gonna come down, let's see, center. And we're going to place, let's see what we place there. We're going to place the top of the handle connector. So this part right here is going to be right on that mark. So basically what's going to happen is your strap connector or your, your hardware will be just over your pocket. So I'm going to take and put a little bit of double-sided tape on here so that it will help hold it in place. Okay, just like that. I'm going to look at it to make sure they look straight and they look like they're the same distance from the edge of the pocket, which they do. 
And then we're going to put these on with rivets. So you're going to measure on your strap connector. We obviously want the rivets centered. From the top, we're going to measure down. And of course, Gail gives us these measurements. So I'm thinking those measurements don't look exactly how I want the bag to look. So I'm actually going to re-measure. So even, you know, y'all know that I've told you this before, that a pattern is a suggestion. If you go to do a step in a pattern and you don't really, maybe it's not the look you're going for on the bag or there's something you want to change, change it. I mean, that's the beauty of sewing is we can do this however we want. It is our bag. So I am going to measure a half inch down and then one inch down. The pattern, or the, um, in the pattern, the measurements are slightly different than that. We want to go ahead and punch holes. Now you can see my hole puncher isn't gonna go all the way down. I really don't wanna scrunch the bag to do it because I don't want the holes to get off. So I'm gonna take this over to my cutting station and I'm just gonna go ahead and punch a couple holes and then I'm gonna put some rivets. And while I am off camera, I'm also going to put the foam on the other piece, okay? And put the strap connectors on the other piece as well. So all that will be completed when we get back and then we'll start sewing all this together. So we have our strap connectors on our front. We have them on the back, the foam is on the back. So now what we need to do is to take these two pieces and stitch them right sides together at the bottom. We're gonna match up our centers, which is easy enough because we have our seam here. And we're going to stitch using a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so from here, Gail suggests putting double-sided tape to hold this seam down. I am going to do that, um, but what, we, what we're planning on doing, what, where we're at, is we're going to be putting this stabilizer piece on top. So we need to go ahead and mark the centers of these side pieces. or the, not side pieces, but the side of the stabilizer. I'm just gonna use some half inch tape along this seam. And as you can see, this bag is getting fairly large. Trying to keep it all in frame for you. Or as much as possible, anyway. Now, once we put the stabilizer on, we can go back and top stitch this down on the right, from the right side on both sides, and it'll help hold this in place. If your machine doesn't mind double-sided tape, that might be a good idea. And I think I will do that. I don't think that part is in the pattern. I 
But in order to get the stabilizer on nice and flat, we do need to go ahead and do this. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go to the iron and I'm going to fuse the stabilizer on. Of course, match up the center marks. And then once we do that, we'll put purse feet on here because this is a big enough bag that I think it definitely warrants having purse feet. I have the deck of all heavy on. And first thing I'm gonna do is turn this over and top stitch on both sides of the seam. Now this is not in the pattern, but I think it's gonna be good to do that, just kind of help hold everything in place. So I'm going to just kind of curl this up. stitch the other side. Okay, so now that that is top stitched, we're gonna go ahead and measure for the feet. Let's see if I can get all of this in the camera for you. Okay, so to do that, I'm just gonna measure an inch from the decaville all around. So you can just draw lines, and then where the lines intersect, is where the feet are gonna go. Now you can put just four feet on here. I think this bag is gonna be big enough that we're gonna want six. So I'm going to also mark the center. Let's see how big this is. So the center's here and here. Okay, so that's those are all the places where my feet are gonna go. So I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, cut my slits, go ahead and put my purse feet in, put some double-sided tape on here so that it holds everything in place, and then we will move on. I have my feet on. I put double-sided tape on the back to protect the lining. It all looks really great. And so now we're going to take it and put it right sides together and sew these side seams. So I'm going to go ahead and clip both sides. Okay. 
And then we're gonna stitch them using a half inch seam allowance. Once the side seams are sewn, we want to go ahead and put some double-sided tape on the seam allowance. And we're going to fold these seam allowances so they're open. Now, you can always use glue in any place that I mention double-sided tape, if you prefer glue, you are more than welcome to use it. It is not a problem. I like the double-sided tape because I don't have to wait for drying time. I'm a very impatient glue and edge coat paint waiter. <laughs> Do not like weeding. Okay, so let's peel these off. Once the seams are open, we're just going to go ahead and box these corners and we're just going to match that seam allowance or that those seams top and bo bottom or sides and bottom. All right, stitch it. Now, when I stitch, I usually take the bag, stand it up, press it down, and then go ahead and stitch. back the seam allowance to about half. And then we're going to install on the sides 
our crossbody strap connectors. So go ahead and take one of them. Now, Gail has us put these on with rivets. You need to really be careful here because you have your side seam. And if you rivet through your side seam, it's gonna make the side seam fall apart. So you really need to just slightly center or put this strap connector off center so that when you punch your holes for your rivets, you don't have a problem with it ripping your side seam. And ask me how I know all about that. So we're going to first mark for our rivet placement. So I'm going to mark a half inch down and then a half inch down again. And that will give me my two holes. I am going to punch these holes first because I want to be able to line this up on the bag and just make sure that my holes are not going to break the side seam before I punch them. So let me do that. I do have some double-sided tape on here because I wanted to peel that off to make sure that that could hold it in place while I get the rivets on. And I'm going to measure down and we're going to Make sure that the top of the strap connector is against the top of the, or right at the, our um, measurement mark. Now, again, it's easy for me to line this up right on the center line. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to bring it over a hair. And when a hair, I mean like a, an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to see if that's enough so that when I punch these holes, they're not gonna go through. And I'm gonna actually use this pen because I can see a little better. And I can see that is going to be Perfect. I don't know with the camera if you can see, but the holes are going to be right there and see my seam is right here. So it's about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. I don't know if that's the top hole or the bottom hole, but let me see here. here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and punch my holes. I might be able to do it with this because it doesn't matter if I fold this up now because the strap connector is not on there. Just to make sure I'm to the side of that seam. rivets in. Now if you need to put some stabilizer on the back of this, you certainly can. I think between the foam and the fact that this is on the seam allowance, it's going to give me that stability that I need. And these are nine millimeter. And honestly, I think they're a little bit too short. Well, maybe not. Let's see. 
No, I think they'll be all right. Yeah. Okay. So I will punch, go ahead into the, my rivet press and get those in and then put the other strap connector on as well. So we have our crossbody strap connectors installed. And at this point, we're not going to turn the bag yet. We're just going to set this aside and we're going to start working on the interior. So we're going to start with the interior flap. We're going to put a magnetic snap on this. So we're going to find the center. And if one is obviously lining to you, um, maybe you have different fabrics, you want to do this on the lining side. We're going to measure and mark. And on this piece, we're going to put the female side of the snap. And of course you want to use some kind of stabilizer behind this. Now this seems to be far enough away from the edge that I think I'll be okay to install it first before I sew. installed and this here is going to be the bottom of the flap so just kind of remember where your magnetic snap is is the bottom so we're going to clip these together and we're going to sew around we're going to leave a hole at the top for turning So I'm going to leave a hole up here. So it's going to stitch all the way around. We're going to turn this. Now you all know my trick when you have one seam and you stitch a, like a pocket, a slip pocket. You stitch down the side and then you fold along your stitches and you turn it out and you get a perfect corner. You can do the same thing when you have two lines of stitching like this. All you do is you fold against the side stitching just like you normally do, but you also fold against the bottom stitching. And then you stick your finger and thumb in, hold that down, and go ahead and punch it out here. And then use your turning tool to get the last little bit out.
So we're going to fold and fold. I mean, see, that's really nice. And basically what it's doing is just keeping the seams um, flat, which allows it to fold nicely. Now you can press this, which is what I'm going to do with it being linen. I want to make sure that I press all of the sides nice and flat. I'm actually going to put some clips here to help. And it's just going to make it all look a lot neater and nicer. These corners are going to be nice and flat. And then when we top stitch, we're just going to top stitch the sides and the bottom. So I'm going to take this to the iron and then we will come back. We are actually going to top stitch the top closed and then we're going to um, go ahead and top stitch around the rest of the pocket or the flap. So on this flat piece, we are now going to draw a line from the bottom. And of course, Gail gives us this measurement in the pattern. And remember, your bottom is where your snap is. And we are going to stitch this onto one of our divider pieces right on this line. So go ahead and take one of your divider pieces and I'm going to use one of the ones with the woven fuse on the back. We're going to measure down from the top. We're going to center this, make sure we place the bottom, snap on the bottom. Let's see, center. and we're going to stitch right along this line.
a little wavy there, but that'll be all right. Okay, so this is what we have. And my mistake, we should not have closed this top yet. We're going to edge, edge stitch the top down on top of the, so I'm just going to go ahead and do another row of stitching here. And I'm going to do this about an eighth of an inch away from my original stitch just to make it look purposeful. Now, we're now going to take our insulated lining and we're going to put it right behind this piece and we're just going to base this on all the way around the edge. So let's set this aside for just a minute. And we're gonna take out our lining piece, one of our lining pieces. We're gonna find the center. And then we're going to install our other snap on here. Go right there. So this is the final snap piece. It's going to be the male piece. And we're going to make sure we put some stabilizer behind it. So it doesn't pull through our lining. Just put this in. Put our stabilizer, washer, and bend these down. So now we're going to take our other piece of our insulated lining and we're going to put it on. Now, by putting this on this way, it means that when I put it in my bag, and this is the thing that we're just going to have to be careful of, is we want to make sure that our two squares are lined up. So that means that when I put this bag together, this is the side that the insulated or the lining's gonna have to go in this way, okay? So we're just gonna have, it really doesn't make a difference at this point, but when we go to install all this together, we wanna make sure those line up. But for right now, we're just gonna lay this on and we're gonna baste all the way around to get it onto our main piece here.
that's all basted on, ready to go. I'm just gonna set this aside. We're gonna work on our divider pocket. So go ahead and get your one of your divider pocket pieces. Now, there's one that does not have any kind of woven interfacing. I'm gonna take that piece because this is the piece that we're going to join with our um, pocket that's got our insulated lining. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with this and just go ahead and put some double-sided tape at the top here. Now, in the pattern, Gail is using a pre-made, like a pre-made dress zipper. I have zipper by the yard. So what I'm gonna do is measure this pocket piece, which is about 14 inches. And I'm going to cut my zipper Um, I'm going to cut it 14 inches, but I am going to be cutting it back once I do my little right angles, because I'm going to install this the way we typically, you know, install zippers. So I'm just going to take and fold, do a little right angle here. Put a pin. Do the same thing on this side. Let's stitch this. Carefully. So we don't stitch our pin. and then stitch the other side. So from this edge, I'm gonna measure so that my zipper is an inch shorter. Uh, let's make an inch and a half, an inch and a half shorter than the top of our bag. And then at that point, I'm going to go ahead and cut the zipper off. I'm going to go and cut a little piece of my main fabric to create a little zipper end here. Hold on just a minute. You want to go ahead and put your zipper pull on. And again, this is only if you're using zipper by the yard. If you're using a ready-made zipper, like a dress maker zipper, you don't have to do all these steps. You can just, once we start sewing the, zip, sewing the zipper on is where you'll, you'll pick up with us. So I'm gonna take my piece of faux, put it right side with my zipper, and stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm just going to fold that right around that seam allowance. Okay, and top stitch. So essentially now what we have is a ready-made zipper. We just had to make it. So I'm just gonna cut off the excess in the back. Cut off the sides to make it even with the zipper. And then, ta-da, we have our zipper. So place your zipper right side down on your main fabric. And go ahead and just find the center here. And we'll find the center of the zipper. And we'll just make sure everything's nice and centered. So when you find the center of the zipper, obviously you want to go to where the teeth are bent. And make tiny little snips. Okay. 
peel your backing off the tape. I'm going to go ahead and line up the centers. Now don't pull on your zipper, just lay it down. Okay, and then we're gonna take some more eighth of an inch double-sided tape. You can either put it on the zipper or on the piece of lining. I'm going to put it on this piece of lining. I don't think it would hurt to put woven interfacing on this piece. Matter of fact, if I had to do it again, I think I would. It just helps stabilize the lining. You know, it helps not give it so much movement. And then of course it helps with wrinkles and all that kind of good stuff too. Okay, so we're gonna take this and lay it right on top. Again, I don't wanna pull, I'm just gonna lay it down. And now we're going to stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance all the way across. zipper pull. And then finish up. If you did use this method, go ahead and just trim your excess zipper and you can just burn the edge of the zipper just to make sure it doesn't come apart. We're going to open this up. Turn it all the way around. I'm gonna put some clips to hold all this in place. So now we want to top stitch along the zipper. Also going to baste these pocket pieces closed so all the way around just to make sure that they stay together okay So I am going to, this is not the right piece. I was gonna say I was gonna put a little pin or something where my square is, but this is the divider, not the, um, not the main lining. So take your, we're gonna do the same th thing with the other pocket. We're just gonna go ahead and put it on the other side of the zipper. So take some double-sided tape. Put 
put it along the top edge of both of these. So now these two pieces, divider pieces, do have some interfacing on the back. Let's go ahead and I should have marked my center. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. And I'm going to line up the center of the zipper, the center of the pocket. And I'm not going to pull, I'm just going to make sure it's laid down nice. Nice and flat, lining up these raw edges. Take the backing off the other side. We're going to go ahead and lay it down on top of the zipper. And then we're going to stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you pull your zipper pull out of the way. Up. I'm going to do the same thing by going ahead and snipping off our zipper, burn this edge, and I'm going to do the same thing with this side of the pocket. I'm going to put the wrong sides together and then go ahead and top stitch and then baste around the edges. I have my other pocket top stitch and I basted it all the way around. So now you're going to fold these so that they are essentially lining sides together. So I'm using the same fabric for my lining in my outside, my exterior of the pocket, so it's all the same, but you basically want the zipper on top so that you can unzip and zip the zipper. Make sure you align your top edges. And you're gonna have raw edges here on the side and that's okay, those will eventually go away. We'll hit hide those, but we're going to baste all of these layers together. Now the very last thing that we need to do with this pocket or divider is to cut half inch squares out of the bottom. So the bottom two corners, you're going to measure half inch over and a half inch up. Draw a little box. And then we're going to cut these out. Okay, so our divider, zipper divider is done. 
And of course we have our insulated lining on this side. Same side as our snap. Take your other, so basically the piece of lining that we haven't touched yet. And this is where we're gonna install our zipper pocket. Now you know I like to use these zipper overlays. So I just cut a zipper overlay piece that was just a little bit, here's my pocket piece. So it's just a little bit smaller than my pocket piece, okay? And then I cut a half inch box out of the center. We're gonna stitch around the outside of this piece. We're going to cut the inside out. And I'm just making sure to pull the lining away from the overlay because I don't want to cut the overlay. And then we're going to take our pocket piece. We're going to take some of our zipper tape. We burn the edge of that. So this is a number five zipper. I'm just going to cut it the same length as the zipper pocket. Now, sometimes my zippers on my zipper pockets go a little wavy. I think that a lot of people have had that problem in the future. They've asked me about it. One of the things I have found recently that actually helps it, I used to never use double-sided tape on my zipper pockets. I just felt like, well, it's just as easy to clip and go. But really, the tape, I think, holds the zipper down and prevents it from shifting or um you know getting bubbly i guess for another lack of another word as you stitch so i'm just going to go ahead and put that zipper or put that double-sided tape on there so that i can stitch and it'll help hold everything in place And then from here, we're going to take that seam allowance and press it towards the pocket so the zipper tape is nice and flat and top stitch. of you have asked me about stitching my lining on this machine it really is not made to do it and it doesn't love it if I was in here by myself not filming I would actually take this to my domestic machine and do it but just for ease of filming and without having to switch back and forth between cameras and machines and 
everything else, um, it's easier for me to just do it here. But do understand that these industrial machines really are not made to sew on cottons and linens and, you know, really thin materials. It doesn't make them super happy. And I'm, I'm actually having to kind of almost guide and pull this through as I go, especially when I'm top stitching, because it's just too thin. It doesn't want to, the feet don't want to grab the material. So like that part isn't so bad because I'm going through cotton or linen interfacing and a zipper. But somehow when I turn it and try to do this right here, it really doesn't like doing this part. So anyway, just full disclosure. I, I think that if you have an industrial machine, you really do need to also have a domestic machine. I can't imagine not having a domestic even though I don't use it that often. But when I do use it, I need it. See how that's buckling right there? I don't know if you can tell. It just, it doesn't like it, so. here we are going to go ahead and put our zipper pull on and these are handcrafted zipper jigs that we have on our website we usually just bring them to shows but we went ahead and listed them on the site it they are made by a local welder and he took old forks he had to bend and weld and do whatever he had to do to get all of this kind of fancy twisty stuff. And not all of them are the same, you know, some of them are not twisted, but um, the way that I had him design these ends here is the two ends of the forks are bent in so that your zipper pole does not go too far down. And this works for a number three or a number five. And then he just used some old fence post to mount these on. So anyway, if you are interested, they are online. So let's take our double-sided tape again. And this is quarter inch. I just put it at the very edge of the zipper tape. And then we're going to center the zipper right in the opening. Take the backing off the tape. And I like my zipper pull going to the left, but that is personal preference up to you. So the longer the zipper opening, the harder it is to center for sure. And then also, um, I think the harder it is to sew because you've got a longer, a longer space here on this, you know, the, the short ends aren't a big deal. It's these long ends that can sometimes get off and they can, I think that kind of sometimes mm, adds to, if you have a wavy zipper, chances are it's a longer run. I guess it's the right word to say. Thank you. 
Okay, so we are going to stitch the inside of this rectangle to stitch the zipper in place. Make sure that you have your zipper pocket open. Otherwise you will be sewing it closed. Okay, so from here, we are going to take the top half of this pocket and fold it down to the bottom half. And whenever you use this method, you're always gonna have about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter left over at the bottom. That is okay, we're just going to cut that off. So what we're going to do is turn this right side up. Go ahead and pull the lining back. And then you want to go ahead and stitch your pocket closed, but we're only going to do it on the sides. We're going to leave the bottom open. So just back stitch really good over the zipper, come down and back stitch really good down here at the bottom. Once you're done, you can go ahead and cut off any excess that you may have. And there is our zipper pocket. Now you've got plenty of room in this bag. If you wanted to add a uh, slip pocket down here, you could certainly do that. Gail does not have it in the pattern, so I am going to skip it. So we're gonna take our two main body line pieces. So we have this one, this one. We're gonna measure in from the side a measurement that Gail gives us, and we're going to mark. Okay, that's gonna be our zipper placement. 
So we're going to do the same thing with this zipper, number five zipper, as we did with the number three when we did the the divider pocket. We're just going to, and you can mark a line here, but we're going to fold a little right angle up and put a pin. You can hand base this as well. You don't have to sew it with a machine. And then whenever I baste these, I always make sure my zipper teeth are going to the back. It just is a little bit easier to approach the angle in this manner. And make sure I do not stitch my pin. Same thing with the other side. So we're going to start with this pocket piece here. Since our zipper is here, we want to make sure that we have our zippers going in the same direction. Melt that little piece of thread. So go ahead and put some eighth of an inch double sided tape on your piece. And we're just going to do it between our marks. You can actually go ahead and do it on both pieces. but we want to start with this one. We're going to put the right angle edge going in the same direction as our zipper pocket right on that mark. You're going to put your zipper right side down. So I'm just going to stick it right on that mark. I'm going to make sure that the teeth or excuse me, that the edge of the zipper is lined up with the edge of the lining. And then we are going to stop sewing at our other mark. We can base this on, which I am going to do. And I'm just going to take a little right angle here, right at that mark. And that's where I'm going to stop. And with that right angle going down, it's going to help the zipper stay down into the bag. So I'm going to put a clip right there. Okay, so just base this on. We're going to take our upper lining piece, we're going to place it right along this edge and clip. Now, for most of the pattern, this, the seam allowance is half an inch, but in this case right here, it is a quarter of an inch. So we're going to stitch
I'm going to cut my right angle of zipper out of the way. I'm going to fold this upper lining up. And look what I did. I put my zipper on backwards. Hmm. I sure did. Okay. Well, I'm going to take that apart and we're going to flip this around and do it again. I think I was thinking about putting right sides together. You know, putting your um, zipper and main fabric right sides together. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to do this again. So we're going to take some eighth of an inch double sided tape and put it between our marks one more time. Okay, now we're going to peel the backing off that tape and we're going to put the zipper so it is wrong side of the zipper against the right side of the lining. And line up the edge of the right angle with the mark and then just lay our zipper down right on top of our lining. All the way down. So we're going to have to veer our zipper off right at the point of our other mark. Okay, so from here, we can go ahead and clip our upper lining on. You can baste your zipper on, but I'm going to clip the upper lining on instead of basting because I had two lines of stitching to take out instead of one line. There's my point that I veer off. All right, so we're gonna stitch a quarter inch seam allowance. off our excess zipper and success we're going to top stitch our upper lining up so our seam allowance is going towards our upper lining I had not trimmed my zipper, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that back. So we're going to repeat this process on the other side, and then we're going to do it right the first time. So I've got my double-sided tape. I'm going to line this up now. At this point, you can see this is really tight, so I'm just going to take this zipper apart and line it up with that right angled edge right along that 
mark we made, lay this down, veer off at my other mark, take my upper lining, put it right on top, and then we'll stitch it in place. We're going to flip our upper lining and top stitch. Got that done. Okay, let's put this lining together. So we're going to take our divider pocket and we're going to take the zipper pocket piece. So now it happens, so happens that all of our zippers are going in the same direction. Yay. <laughs> we're going to take our divider pocket and we're going to line it up so that it is even with the edge. And the bottom is even with this edge. Okay, so you can see the back side here. We're going to clip this. And then we're going to stitch. And the seam allowance for this is a basting stitch. So at this point, we're just basting this on. Let me clip this out of the way. And we got a lot of basting stitches on this divider piece. So from here, you're going to take the other side and you're going to pull it so that it lines up with the bottom and the sides, just like the other side did. We're going to baste it in place. Now we need to take the bottom and we need to baste it in place. So take your, and it's going to be easier to take your bottom up to the divider. You're going to have, go ahead and find your center. Let's do that. Actually, I can see the center from my fold. I should have done this before, but I'm going to find the center of both the bottom and the divider. Okay, I'm going to match the centers up. And 
And basically you're going to have about the same distance from the bottom excess and the side excess. It's going to be about the same. So what you're going to do is this is going to create your corner here, your box corner. So you can kind of do just a little test run, see if it's going to line up, and it looks like it is. So now we're going to base this bottom on. I'm going to do it from this side so I can make sure this excess is out of the way. So that forms one side of our lining. So now we're going to take our other side. Now remember our actual um, thin slate or, or the lining, the fleece is on this side of this pocket and it's on this side here. So we are going to line this up. Now make sure that you're lining up your bottoms here, like your, your side and your bottom. Like this all the way. We also want to make sure that our upper linings match. So we're going to sew this using a half inch seam allowance. So this is the final, essentially the final stitch for this lining on this side. So my zipper pull for my dividers over here, I'm just going to pull that out of the way. Now when you sew, you're only going to sew down to where your divider piece ends. Don't sew all the way to the edge of the bag because we still need to do our box corner. Okay, so here's where my divider ends. I just sewed to that point right there. So we're going to do the same thing on this other side. Clip this out of the way. We're going to line up our upper linings. And then clip down. And so now I'm starting down here. I'm going to start right where my divider begins right here. I'm not going to the end. And actually, I'm going to flip this around so I can do it this way. And I can stitch my upper lining first because I want to make sure these match. We got a lot of thickness here, so I would say that in my my vinyl, my faux is really thin. So if you don't have an industrial machine, this is going to be probably a tough bag to do on a domestic because 
this is just a lot of bulk right here. We're going to do the same thing with the bottom. And I should have found my center, so let me do that. I'm going to match that up with the centers here. And again, as we stitch this, we're just stitching to where the divider ends. Don't stitch all the way to the end. It'll give us enough space to do our box corners. So just make sure as you sew this, you have all this bulk out of your way. You want to lay it nice and flat. And what I'm doing is just making sure here that all of this part is out of the way and this part is out of the way. And I know exactly where I need to start, which is right here at the divider. And to be honest with you, I think what I'm going to do, this might be a good tip, start in the center and stitch to the sides. Because, as you know, when you're stitching forward, you can get closer to where you need to be than if you're stitching with the back of your presser foot um, against where you need to start. You're not going to be able to start as close, if that makes sense. So I'm actually going to start right here in the middle. And then just stitch to the edge of the divider, which is right here. You see, I was e able to easily get there. So I'm just going to turn this over and do exactly the same thing. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead and box our corners, which is almost pretty much done for you, as you can see, because we did not stitch anywhere in this area. So we're just going to stitch from here to our point where we left off before. And then the same thing here to the point where we left off. So I'm going to go ahead and put some clips. And I'm going to start from the edge, this edge, and stitch to that point. Because again, it's going to be easier for me to stitch to that point going forward than to try to start there because of all this bulk and go out. This side. So 
so you can kind of take a peek inside and just make sure that all that is stitched well and it's nice and boxed and it looks really good. So we're going to do the same thing over here. And then one more. out in here. It looks good. Okay, I'm going to trim this seam allowance back. And I'm realizing as I'm doing all this that Gail's wanting us to pull this entire bag through this zipper pocket. And I am not sure that I want to do that, especially with this divider in there. It's going to be tough. So I think I'm going to do a drop-in lining. I think it's going to be easier. I'll go ahead and sew it at the cylinder arm machine. So therefore, I need to go ahead and sew the bottom of my zipper pocket closed. See, we have a lot of bulk here. go ahead and cut this back as well. I'm not going to cut back here at the upper lining. I'm just going to start kind of where the bulk starts. And then right in here we have our divider so it gets really thick. I'm going to do the same thing over here, just clip. And then where our divider starts, it's going to get really thick. is all of the seam allowances. All right, let me sew this zipper pocket closed before I forget. Let's see, do it this way. So from here, I'm going to, before I turn the main part of my bag around, I'm going to go ahead and put some double-sided tape at the top. So I can fold it over this foam and it'll stay for me. So what Gail has you do is put this on the same, put the exterior of the bag on the same side as the zipper pocket. Okay, she has you put it all in here. And then make sure your zipper pocket's all the way open. You sew it right sides, or you, yeah, right sides together. And then you turn the whole bag through the zipper pocket and then you top stitch. Which you can certainly do that but um again since i have the cylinder arm i am going to and you could this is really a big enough bag 
you don't have to have a cylinder arm to do this drop-in lining. This is definitely large enough that you could do it on a flatbed. I believe. I might just do a little test so I can tell you all for sure. So remove the double-sided tape and just fold this right over the foam. Use the foam as a guide. Okay, so now that all that is down, I'm going to turn this bag. Before I put double-sided tape on this side here, on the lining, I'm going to Okay, so my flap is here and my grommet's going to go right here. Here is my square for that matches up. Okay, so I'm going to slide this in and I just want to make sure it fits before I start putting double-sided tape in all that. So you know, sometimes we have to make slight adjustments. So let me just make sure the corners are all poked in well. And if I fold this over a half inch, that should match up perfectly. So I'm also going to make sure that the width is okay. And it looks like my lining's a little big. I'm just gonna, sometimes you gotta put the clips on. So I'm just gonna put some clips on here and see if I need to make any adjustments. like I'm going to have to take the lining in a little bit. Okay, so if you ever do a bag and you get to this point and whether you're doing right sides together, wrong sides together, it doesn't matter, and you have extra, like I do here, 
you can see my lining is bigger than the main part of my bag. What I typically do is I will clip to that point of extra. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is I'm going to go past the side seam. At this point, it doesn't matter if the side seams match up. I mean, we're just trying to see if this fits. And I can see that I have... This is hard with the zipper, but let me do it this way. Okay. So I can see I have this much too much. Okay. So what I typically do is I'll measure that and see what it is. So I can see that is a half inch. So that means that it's an inch off because I have a half inch here and a half inch here. So I'm going to take the lining in and see this is why I didn't put any double sided tape on it because it's much easier to wait make sure it fits and then put the double sided tape. So I'm just going to pull this out. And I'm going to come in I'm going to come in an extra amount here and an extra amount over here. So since it's an inch, it really needs to be a quarter inch because I'm going to take a quarter inch away from this side, a quarter inch away from this side, a quarter inch away from this side, and a quarter inch away from this side, which equals our inch. So don't sew an inch more and don't sew a half inch more thinking, oh, I have an inch, so that's a half inch and a half inch. It's a fourth of that because you're taking it in. You have one, two, three, four, two seams, but four pieces that you are adjusting. So I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch more on each side. And I'm going to start I mean, I can feel my dividers right here. I'm just going to start somewhere in here and just, or actually I'm going to probably start at the top and come down and just kind of veer off because they're really the sides and the rest of it look like it fit okay. And just kind of veer off into the, where the divider is. So you're going to do a quarter of an inch, or I'm going to do a quarter of an inch from my stitch line. My existing stitch line. So you see what that is. Now I'm going to cut this part off. So that I can still, even though it's smaller, I can still open up that seam allowance. Okay. So do the same thing over here. be able to open that up. So you can check it again. I'll just kind of do a quick, should be fine now, but I think I'll be able to make that work. Okay. So I'm going to take and put some double-sided tape on the top of my lining. I'm going to open up the seam allowance.
And then I'm also going to mark, well, I'm gonna tell you, I, I already know this is, I'm gonna to have to fold this edge all the way to the seam, you know, where the actual um, raw edge is, is how far I'm gonna to have to go. And I could just tell that from when I tested it and I knew where it was. So that actually is a little bit more, I think, than a half inch. Nope, it's right at a half inch. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and peel this back. And just start folding this down. So now we have this nice crisp edge. Everything's looking good. So I'm not stitching through three layers of double-sided tape. I am going to put some double-sided tape to hold this together, but I'm going to put it a little further down so it's outside my seam allowance. We're going to do an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So this is a quarter inch. This is a half inch um, fold. This is quarter inch tape. So I'm just going to put it right along the top of the seam so that it is outside my seam allowance when I'm sewing, but yet it's gonna help me hold the bag together so it won't slip on me as I'm putting this all together. Because my machine does not mind double-sided tape, but you know, it does have its limit. Okay. Now make sure you put your bag in right. You want to make sure that your square is the same side as your square on the inside here. So that is here and here. So we're going to put this together. I'm going to peel the backing off this tape and go ahead and put my edges together and I'm also going to clip. So now with this bag totally ready to go, I'm going to move over to the cylinder arm and we're going to top stitch. Once that's done, all we really have left is to put the grommet in, which is going to go here. Of course, put our handles on and we should be... Oh, done. Okay, I did one thing wrong when making this lining, and I want to point it out. And when I go to do it wrong in the video, I'll make sure that I we put some words in there that says, don't do this step. This flap here that we sewed onto the divider, the top stitching that I had you do an inch and a half from the bottom, it should not have been stitched to the divider right there. It should have just been top stitched and left free. So I'll be able to fix it. All I'm going to do is take that stitching out and then the divider will be free except for 
you know, the top where we stitched it, which is fine. Then I'll be able to snap my snaps because if you, I think you can see this, my snaps are so far apart. They're not, I mean, they're not even close. So I knew I did something wrong. So before I saw this whole thing together, I'm going to take that out just to make sure that it operates correctly. Again, I can probably pull this out and top stitch, um, top stitch it, you know, basically re-stitch where I, where I was supposed to stitch, but not stitch it to the divider. I hope that makes sense. So I apologize for that, but do not stitch. When you, when you stitch an inch and a half or stitch an inch and a half up from this flap, don't stitch it to your divider, just stitch across the flap. Okay, so I unstitched it and then I just top stitch it like I was supposed to and now I'm able to snap my snap. So what happens is you basically are able to put your beverage container in this part and then you, this kind of acts as a uh, cover of sorts and you're able to snap the snap and then that's basically what you get. You have like a nice cover on top of it. Okay, so again, I will remind you in the video when not to stitch that down. And once you do it, you'll, you'll see what I did wrong. All right, let's move over to the cylinder arm. Okay, I'm gonna top stitch this closed. Let's start here at one of the side seams. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the threads. I'll put the handles on just with rivets and then we'll take a look at how to do that grommet. Okay, it's grommet time. I have a grommet press and I know that most people don't. So I'm gonna do this without using the press. I have these grommets that I got. They're pressed together grommets and they're plastic, but they're really the right size. And I pressed these together to see how they would work and I can't get it apart. So I guess they work pretty good. Um, I think I got them, and I want to say maybe like Joanne's or something. I don't even know. I have them in my stash. So anyway, so I've got another set here, front to back. And obviously we know we want this to be underneath the flap. This is the side that my square was cut out of my fleece and my 
bat or my phone, okay? I want to make sure that the grommet is gonna be covered, obviously, by the flap. So as far as positioning, you just wanna make sure you're kind of in the right spot and you wanna make sure you're within your square. So I'm gonna lay this on here and then just take a pen or some kind of marking tool to draw the circle as to where it's gonna go. Now, another thing, I have two pieces of two by four that I screwed together and I use this all the time. I didn't just do this for this project. I'm always sticking this in bags for different reasons. And so I'm going to stick this right inside this bag. You can also use books. You can go ahead and get the books in there. Um, whatever you need to, to make sure that the lining is pressed down really good inside the bag in this corner, because we're gonna be cutting through the lining and the main part of the bag. The other thing is I have my cutting board and I have different kind of punches. I'm gonna to try to use different, whatever I have, just punches to see if I can get this cut out easily. So I'm going to put a couple of books in here as well because this is actually not super, um, well, let's see, is it? With the cutting board and the wood. Yeah, it might be okay. All right, so I know I want this right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the circle. And you can either cut this out with scissors, or if you've got punches, you can try to use your punches. This punch is gonna be way too big. I can see that, that's an inch and a half. Let me grab my inch and see if my inch will work any better. This is just my end punch. And it's gonna be a little small, but I'd rather be too small than too big. So again, I have my board in there, I have my cutting board on top of the wood. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just cut through both the lining and the main fabric here. So I'm gonna put this on the circle, the edge of the circle. And just turn it and go in the other direction. So I have it mostly cut out. I've got a little spot right here I need to cut with scissors. Okay, so now I have the hole cut out here. So I'm just gonna take, I don't think there's really a front and back to this. This side has a little bit of a lip, so I'll stick that in. and try to get the fabric around it. So I can see that the hole's not big enough. It needs to be larger. Again, you rather it, you have to cut more than you cut too much, right?
Now you want this tight, you don't want it to be super loose. So what I'm trying to do here is to actually kind of fit the fabric around the lip of the grommet. So it looks like the lining is on there pretty good. It's just the main fabric. So I'm just going to try to cut a little bit away. Now I actually have hole punches that would punch this out perfectly. Um, on the grommet press, you just basically, you've got dies and you've got presses that match each grommet size. But again, in an effort to try to show you how to do it without the tools. So I'm almost there. I've got just a tiny little bit over here I need to cut. So it may be that if you have a half inch punch, that's what you start with. You start with a little half inch hole and you just kind of get progressively bigger from there. Just kind of see what you have in your workroom and use it accordingly. All right, so I'm super close. So I'm going to take the top part of this and just snap it together. Let me trim this right here. So I hope you can see how that's working right there. Take this, put it right on top, and then just tap it. Here we go. Yay, okay. So let's get this out. This out. And there's our hole. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and then on the inside, let's see if I can show this to you. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it in there. Yeah, there you go, right there. Oh, wait a minute. Right there. You can see my fingers coming through. So see it's nice and neat in there. All right. Yay. So I'm going to, um, as I said, put my straps on, um, just rivet those on. I'm going to go ahead and put my zipper end on, my zipper pull, my zipper end, and then we'll take a look at the bag. Here is the completed bag, the Kelly Beverage Bag. The handles are connected. Of course, we have a nice crossbody strap, which if you've got liquids in here, it would probably be nice to carry as a crossbody. And then of course you have your straps as well. Despite the mishaps along the way, it really came out well. I'm pretty excited about it. And I love the concept of the bag. Again, going to baseball games, soccer games, whatever it may be, it would be really great to be able to put a beverage of your choice into the bag and just be able to fill cups. You know, you've got multiple kids, you don't have to carry a bunch of different water bottles and whatever, whatever else it may, you may have to carry. Of course, we have this really cool um, pocket here that's at the bottom of that flap. We've got, once I did it correctly, <laughs> we've got this flap Okay, so your beverages would go on this side because your grommet is down here in the corner. Okay, so once you do that, once you put your beverage in there, you're going to take this flap and you're going to be able to snap it and then it's covered. That side is covered. 
And then on the other side, you have a zipper pocket. And of course, you've got a nice big section here. You also have a center divider with a zipper. How cool is that? So you've got plenty of room in this bag to carry whatever it is you want to carry, including beverages. I just love this bag. I think the concept of it is just amazing. Okay, so um, Gail has it rated as advanced, and I do agree. I think it is an advanced bag. I think that you need an industrial machine to make the bag. It doesn't have a lot of heavy stabilizers in it, but with the insulated stabilizer that you have, the insulated fleece, and then you have, of course, your linings, you have um, your main fabrics. I mean, it just gets bulky. It gets bulky quick because of the center divider, and that's just part of center dividers. I also would recommend doing the drop-in lining like I did. I think it would be really hard to turn this bag through the zipper pocket. It is a big zipper pocket, but I still think it would be a challenge. So I do think it's big enough to sew on a flat bed, but the upper lining on this is really thin. It's really little. It's only about an inch, as you can see. So that might pose a little bit of a problem, although the divider in this bag is, of course, down some. So you, you may be able to swing it. Um, I don't know. I think this bag is just really neat. I just came out well. So the Kelly Beverage Bag, American Stitchers. I'll link the pattern below. And until next time, everybody, happy sewing.